Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. We're going to talk about Bob Iger again, uh, saying that Disney isn't woke. Yeah. But is Bullshit. it actually true or not? And you put together an article that looks to, to basically throw some water on that uh, uh, gaslit fire. Oh, yeah, because it's true. I'm sorry. By the definition, and you know, okay, anybody who watches this channel knows, I don't like the term woke. I don't like to use it. I don't like it. Um, unfortunately, it's being used everywhere, but it's not something I like. I think it's overused. I think it's misused. But in this case, I think Bob Iger's full of it. So during an interview after the shareholder meeting with uh, CNBC, because for some reason, Disney always goes to CNBC for their news. Yeah, right? It's weird. weird. So he was. the question was brought about, you know, Disney being woke. Now, if you watch the investor call or talk, listen to our video or listen to other people's videos, we talked about the fact that several questions um, and several propositions that are brought up during the meeting involved uh, Disney's political contributions, the direction Disney's been going, the, you know, the gender, re, you know, detransitioning, and they won't approve that, but they'll approve transitioning. Mm. Um, people asked about why they keep putting the message over the entertainment, things like that. A lot of it went to politics, okay? So even on, there were some on both sides, but a lot of it went to politics. We have the Reedy Creek thing and all that was politically, you know, because of politics and overstepping. It was brought up. So he was asked about being woke on the show. And he said the term woke is thrown around rather liberally, no pun intended. And in that regard, I think a lot of people don't even understand what it really means. Well, neither do you, Bob. Because if you go out to Merriam-Webster, the U.S. slang chiefly for mm -hmm. woke aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. Okay. Yeah. If you got to, to dictionary.com, it means having a marked or having or marked by an active awareness of systemic injustice and prejudices, especially in those involving the treatment of ethical, racial, or sexual minorities. That's okay. what woke means. And Disney, oh, Disney, we don't know. We're not woke like that. They, they, you're misusing it. No, no, we're not. No. And we're going to talk about it. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, get yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. All right. Tell me what woke means. Well, I did tell you what woke means, but here's what. What is woke? Well, for Disney? Yes. Pretty much Disney's everything. Disney's definition of pretty, woke. Yeah, I'd Bob. love to know what his definition of woke is, because by the definition they gave, Disney is definitely woke. And even in comments he made continuing this, remembering what I told you definitions were, they make statements that sound like it aligns the definition. He also said, I think the noise has sort of quieted down. No, it hasn't. I've been no, preaching this for a long time at the company before I left and since I came back. That our number, that our number one goal is to entertain. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of number one priority in the films and TV shows is not what we're up to. But it is what you're up to. Yes, very um, much so. They need to be entertaining. And where the Disney company can have a positive impact on the world, whether it's, you know, fostering acceptance and understanding of people of all different types, great. But you're not infusing messaging. So which is it? Yeah, I mean, here's where it gets conflated, though. Here's where um, woke does get overused. It, and I, I think I brought this up before I said about Star Trek, but like, you, there's a difference between being progressive and being empathetic and being woke. Woke is at the point where it gets ridiculous, or in this case, where it's a company mandate, and Disney does have many company mandates in mm -hmm. place. Basically, like even if the story doesn't call for it, we're going to put it in there because checkboxes. Right. Are, I mean, why did we need yeah. a race swap Little Mermaid and Tinkerbell? You didn't. No. Why was Peter Pan and Wendy more about Wendy? It didn't need to be. <sighs> why and does the, the Silver Surfer have tits? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's a, we're going to talk about this ongoing trend from Disney and yeah. where he's like saying, oh, we're not. It's a load of shit. Like, hell, you aren't, Bob. Um, then he said, but generally speaking, we need to be an entertainment first company. Yes. Yes, you do, Bob. And understanding that, look, we're trying to reach a very, very diverse audience. And they go on about being a diverse audience. And on one hand, in order to do that, you, what you do, the stories you tell have to really reflect the audience you're trying to reach. So while you're trying to reach one audience, you're losing your main audience, Bob. But the audience, because they're so diverse, really, first and foremost, they want to be entertained. No shit, Bob. And sometimes they can't be turned off 
by certain things. They can be. And we just have to be more sensitive to the interest of a broad audience. Which is it, Bob? The audience you're trying to reach or the broad audience? Because the broad audience has turned their back on you. The, the audience that Disney wants, that Bob Iger wants, is China. But to get China, you have to turn your back on the diverse audience in the U.S. Yeah, but that's not what he's doing now. <laughs> the, but the audience, There's no money there the now. The audience so. they keep pandering to is Twitter. Yes. But the big audience, the broader audience, the audience that has paid your bills for years and put you into record profits and all that crap a few years ago is the audience that you are basically turning off and they're not coming to your movies. And it's not bigotry. Because you have these movies that reflect these, you know, all this diverse and inclusive stuff. And people that even identify in the way you're reflecting aren't coming. Because as soon as people hear Disney's putting out a movie and you lead with diversity, 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 mm -hmm. even the people you're representing are like, oh, my God, this is going to suck. It's going to be yeah. all about ham-fisted bullshit. Mm -hmm. So the audience is at large. The main audience, your main audience isn't going anymore. Your stuff's falling off a cliff. And you can't say they're all bigots, Bob. He can. Well, he, he's, it's not smart. And some of the people working for him have said that. Yes. And we're going to, you know, and we're it's not that. smart. And, and we can we can see what the damage is. So I brought up some different things like there in recent years. Disney has most definitely been pushing what can be considered woke messaging. And the message was more important than the entertainment value. We saw Marvel. I mean, how many characters have been race or gender swapped? Mm -hmm. How many times we've we been like, you know, we're going to do the Marvels even, the, but, you know, everybody said it was a bad idea because, you know, oh, Captain Marvel did well, but that's up for debate. Um, it did well for a bunch of reasons. One main reason that people cite is that everybody thought they had to see it before Endgame. Yes. We, you went with She-Hulk and you keep doubling down with these shows. You're basically replacing all the characters and the, they're not doing well. So much so that you've had to redo the entire thing of Daredevil Born Again because you saw it and you knew audiences would be turned off. Yes. You're reshooting, refilming stuff because you're trying to save it. Yeah. So there's, I mean, this is like, yeah, it, it sounds to me like they still want to do it. I, th I think they're just going to be more sneaky about it. I don't, you know, they've done diversity for years and diversity and inclusion is fine if it's, if it's just like that happens to be there. I, the problem is they don't do that. Like this character happens to be diverse. Is do we mention that it's this? And if you don't like it, you're a terrible person. I, I think. Um, and yeah, Lucasfilm and Pixar are the two biggest. Like they they will go out of their way to make sure that like you know they alienate the bigots um, proudly. But I think that like the the big difference is they used to just do organic diversity that served the story and now the story serves the diversity exactly if you and it's not entertaining the talking points the people political talking points see it then they roll their eyes and they don't even they don't even go and we're yeah. talking people that even you represent are like i don't want to go because it's going to suck you know it's not going to be about good it's going to be about message 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 star wars luke skywalker big red x on his face and now we have ray and then why the hell was little Leia with Obi-Wan Kenobi? That made I no mean, damn sense. The little girl who plays Leia as, as cute as can be. Oh, she's and a I cute loved kid. her. Yeah. I thought she was sweet. And I thought she did a good job playing Leia. That being said, Leia shouldn't have been there. There was that was that was stupid. There but, was no point to it other than well, we're not doing the force is female. Like hell you are. There is no indication in the original trilogy that Leia knew who Ben Kenobi was other than through her dad. Uh, and she heard stories about and him. And she heard stories about him because she didn't seem too torn up when he died. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, your old man friend died there, Luke. Let's go blow up some TIE fighters. Right. You know? Because she didn't meet him. They retconned it. For because the, she the... named her kid after him, which made no damn sense. No. And here's the thing Here's the thing that gets me, too, is the fact that they keep saying, oh, we weren't trying to push the force this female on this female agenda. We know that Obi-Wan had a story and then it got scrapped. And I bet you that the story was probably with Luke which made way more sense. Way, but we can't have that, sense. guys, because that's two white dudes, two men. We have to make it about little Leia because we need women. Reva and Leia, that's what the whole thing's about for the Obi-Wan show. And guess what? Didn't do too hot, did it? The only thing anybody cared about was Hayden Christensen and Ian McGregor coming back. And even then, it didn't make any damn sense because I'm like, why is he fighting Vader like that, I, I thought in the, the the original trilogy in the New Hope, that was the first time he'd seen Anakin as Vader, right? Like it's not like he's fighting him every damn week. That makes no. Well, how dare you use sense. continuity as an excuse? Um, they, they don't. And you know the story group don't even get me started. And then I'm going to mention the acolyte later, but I'll mention it now. The acolyte. 
they're going out of their way to talk about all the casting, about how diverse it is. All the stories about the show are about the diversity of the show. And the one girl that they have as a the character, they're talking about how she's intersectional, intersectional feminist and non-binary. I'm sorry, they are non-binary and all this other shit. And I'm like, okay, what about the character? Well, the, they, them, this, that. I'm like, I don't care. What about the character? You're only hearing about how diverse it is. And we went on set. We were, oh, it was so great because we're all so diverse. And I'm an Asian Jedi and I'm a this Jedi. And I'm like, well, okay. Because they keep running this narrative that women and minorities never like Star Wars, which is a load of shit. A lot of people like Star Wars before Disney took over. And yeah, and yeah don't, don't give me that. And when you had, you know, you could have a black Jedi with uh, Finn and it was a really cool story because he was an ex-stormtrooper. You done flushed it for Ray, So Palpatine's granddaughter can take the Skywalker name and, and complete his mission. Because you're dumb. You're flipping dumb. Don't even start. Oh yeah, then the Acolyte, it gets better. They're trying to get everybody to go to the, fan, to the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary airing over the Star Wars weekend. Yeah, they're going to run a, a behind the scenes or a first look at the Acolyte to try to get interest in the Acolyte because nobody fucking cares. During the Phantom Menace, they're going to shoehorn it in there. They're going to get you in for what you want to force feed you what you don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, use force too. Yes, that that's going to be episode ten. That's going to be called nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares. Then we go back to I've mentioned this before Dana Walden, who they're saying I hope we get her as a CEO because she's got tits and it'd be the first woman CEO um, for Disney. <laughs> I can just see the board like, well, we really like this Dana Walden. Why do you like her? Well, she's got tits. Yeah, basically, and moxie. basically the qualifications I'm hearing, and I'm honestly the, of the four, she's not the most qualified. No. The qualifications I'm hearing is she's a woman. I'm sorry. As a woman, being a woman isn't a qualification. Um, she, but she's the one who was out um, talking about the, the new guidelines and the inclusivity and DEI guidelines for entertainment. And the one that said that they passed on a show that was a great show because it was too white. I will tell you for the first time, we received some incredibly well-written scripts that did not satisfy our standards in terms of inclusion. So we passed on them. Yeah, that's not a good, that's not a good sign. You want, you want Disney to be known as a company that appeals to everybody hiring a person who has, uh, you know, not, not uh, greenlit shows that would have been hits that would have made the company money just because there are too many white people. Says the white woman. Says the white woman, the blonde white woman, like come the fuck that. You, yeah. You don't need that. Where's all the diversity. You have some people that are like head of this or head of that, but where are the, like the C-suite top of the top executives that are diverse? How well? Because other than being other being a woman, yeah, that's a good. That is actually a good question. Didn't they have a, a black dude in charge of movies or TV, and then they fired him? Yeah, because he was Chapek. He was Chapek's guy. Yeah. yeah. So huh. then these are the, huh. the these are the when she was talking about that she was talking about the entertainment content and inclusion standards that they're getting sued about. They're trying to say that it's racist and sexist because they're trying to focus on they're putting mandates in that half of the this and that have to be at least people that aren't white, straight or male. Yeah. You know, and across the board. And look, I'm not against more diversity in movies and TV. The problem is, is it's not just it's not just that you hire more diversity or whatever. You represent more people on screen. It's the fact that the diversity is often lazy. It's race swaps, gender swaps. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to take the wonder years and make it black. You know, it's it's just like. Or you could try making a new show. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just Exactly. Saying. And the characters happen to be diverse, but it's a good show. Right, right. You know, so up until like a few years ago, that was the case. Disney had like Lilo and Stitch and Coco and, you know, they've had Canto recently and they've had all kinds of different TV shows and movies and animated films and stuff for years that have been diverse. And it was about a good story that happened to be diverse. Yeah. Because Princess and the Frog was not a it was not a was was not with a black lead originally. They changed it. People most people didn't care. Of course, you had some people who were you who were mad about it. But for the majority of people, they're just like, oh, okay, we're gonna make a black it, princess. Cool. It was was it, it a good movie? You know. Yeah, it was. Um, actually, what what killed me about that was it was you know the last. 2D animated yeah. movie that they had done. And it was really good. And it, it was good. It did not do well at the box office. And it had nothing, but see, if, if it had happened now, this is like, what, like 2008, 2009. If it happened now, it would have been like... Racism. Racist didn't go see The Princess of the Frog. It's like, no, what happened, unfortunately, was all the CG movies kind of ate its lunch. And it was a real shame because that was like the last hurrah for 2D Disney. It's a daughter's first movie and her favorite Yeah, she princess. loved it. Loved um, it. Willow. 
Do we want to go? Why didn't they do to Willow? So they made a show called Willow where Willow wasn't the main character and it was all about the two lesbian princesses. And when people complain about it being gone, that's what they're mad about. And other characters and stuff that was diversity, diversity, diversity. And it didn't go well with audiences and Disney completely pulled it off of Disney Plus. Yes, that's how that's how much of a hit it was. It was so bad that it it made more sense for them to just take it off the platform completely and take the rate off. Right. Then to keep it on there. And then we have Latoya Raveno, whatever. She was one of the producers of Disney's television animation. And this is when they had that big video where they were, they, they made everybody sit through that. Chapek was there that made everybody sit through this video right. where they were telling their stories. And she was bragging about her not at all secret gay agenda. That's what she called it. The for not kids at all shows. secret gay agenda for kids shows. Okay. Yeah. She said, in my little pocket of proud family, Disney TVA and showrunners were super welcoming to my not at all secret gay agenda. Maybe it was the way in the past, but I guess something must have happened. And they, and then like all that momentum that I felt, that sense of I don't have to be afraid to have these two characters kissing in the background. I was just wherever I could adding queerness. No one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. Wherever I could, I was adding queerness. And this, this is on a video that got leaked that, that Chapek was, you know, you know, involved in. And it's like, but no, no, Disney is not at all. Promoting this stuff, you know, promoting what you would consider woke agenda. I I think that Bob Iger, I'm going to be honest, I think um, I think he is. Yeah, he is to blame for a lot of it. I honestly think he is so up his own ass. He hires these people and he lets them run amok. Well, then he was like telling the one person who's no longer there. She was a DEI officer and he made the joke because she was on a white horse and everybody else is on other color horses. And he's like, that's a horse of a different color. He, he, he had to apologize. Yeah, that's like this is your DEI officer, right? And then she got gone under dubious circumstances. Like, what the hell? This is what I'm saying. Like, he just I don't know. It just it seems to me like he just he puts these people in charge or he doesn't he doesn't monitor them. He's too busy flitting around. Uh, talking to CNBC, writing his book, doing everything but running the company and paying attention to the product that his people are putting out and the shit that's going on, you know, and I know Disney's a big company and, you know, but you can't monitor everyone. But like, yeah, it's a lot of these people. I think they've been given way too much power and they're running amok at the company. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, you know, you, again, they're not doing well because the shows aren't doing well and stuff because nobody's going to see them, including the people that the representation's for. Yeah. Because, you know, one, you know, you're going for a small percentage over the, the the wider audience. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't put diversity in things. If you watch our show, you know that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you can totally have diversity and inclusion. It was in it for years when we were kids. No one thought anything of it because it was just normalized. And you're like, okay, and, you know, and they don't do that, though. It's not just like, okay, and it's like, do we mention that they're this? And if you don't like it, you're terrible. Do we mention this? Do we mention that we did this? Do we mention like, we, like we're seeing with the acolyte? It's very diverse. It's all diverse. There's a lot of lesbians because it's diverse. And my lesbian wife is in it and it's diverse. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but what about the show? You know, and that's <laughs> just it. And we know what we're going to get before the show's out, which is why uh, when I checked it a couple days ago, it was 641,000 down votes to 187,000 up votes. Yeah. And while I'm 100% sure some of it was, you know, people like group, group down voting and group up voting, I think that the majority of people just don't give a shit. I think that's more that's that's I mean, really, what's going to be telling for the uh, the alkali is, um, you know, is the merch moving? Are people talking about it or is it going to be like Obi-Wan, which basically came and went like a fart in the wind? And we're talking a Star Wars show with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, but they were sidelined for Leia and Reva and nobody gave a shit about it. That's but the, the state stink of Star Wars. is still there. The stink, the stink is, is still there. there. I didn't. The yeah. wind didn't take it all away. Um, another one, Snow White. This is a movie they should have canceled a long time ago because even the universe is telling them to cancel it. They wouldn't. It's about their, now the new movie's about a girl boss, how she's going to girl boss her way because the fairest of them all means the best leader. And, you know, the dwarves weren't going to be in it because that was problematic because now it's magical creatures. There's now they're no doing CGI dwarves. There's no save in this one. I know. There's no, there's none. And it's all their movies like last year, except for a couple you know, tanked the box office. Their yes. shows are falling off a cliff. I think Marvel and Star Wars related especially are just like, <laughs> Indiana Jones. I didn't even get on that one. Uh, Gina Carano, they, they they got rid of Gina Carano. Now she's suing them yeah. because she wouldn't put pronouns in her bio. And then they what were the Star Wars social media accounts were defending, you know, Moses Ingram and Kelly Marie Tran and everybody else when they were coming after Gina Carano and demanding she puts pronouns in her bios. 
when when again, Lucasfilm employees, a lot of them do not have pronouns in their bios. That's true. Um, she gets t- tired of abuse, says beep, bop, boop, and then because she didn't vote the way they wanted, they get rid of her. Now she's after them because they said she was abhorrent because she didn't do what they wanted. Abhorrent. And I'm still thinking Lucasfilm people were behind it. Oh, I guarantee you. Um, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it seems like a lot of the, the different divisions of Disney deal with things differently. So we had... Um, you know, the case of Tim Allen, who, you know, came out and said he was conservative. He voted for Trump. Everybody knew he was conservative-ish anyway, but, uh, he, you know, he, he liked Trump. Um, Pixar did not invite him back even to do a, a cameo in Lightyear. And look how well that went. And it was a disaster. But then, you know, other divisions of Disney, he got a, he got a Santa Claus show out of it. And he's and got it did, another it sitcom. pretty well, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and then, okay, so then the big one was Reimagined Tomorrow. Oh, that was a freaking, yeah. They had this whole website, and that's where the, the inclusion standards came in. That's when they had, like, the survey asking you things like were, like, kind of insulting across the board. And then they were, like, doing stuff like having different groups at the at, you know, the different parks or different departments that they were that were all, you, all Hispanic people were in this group, all black people were in that group, and they were giving them, like, you know, kind of stereotype names. Oh, yeah, it was ridiculous. It was like, I mean, th- this isn't what actually happened. Happened, but they were like, you know, okay, well, all the Latino people, you go to the taco truck and then, yeah, kind of, you know, all they your black to folks, you go to the rap corner over the, here. The Tinkerbell and, Club or Tinkerbell, something, yeah, you know. Like and this is all, they, yeah, Disney keeps doubling down on calling people that too when they didn't want to be called that. Um, then we had the whole Reedy Creek, they lost that because they overstepped in the Florida situation. Because they got too political. Theme parks, Splash Mountains, Princess and the Frog now because of the BLM, a Summer of Love, and be, and because, oh, it's racist. It's racist. Even though a lot of people, you know, keep pointing out that it's not about the, it's just the animals. And there's a lot of stories that have been passed down that's not racist, that people won awards for it. And there's a bunch of things that they're pointing out that there's a museum run by black people about the, you know, the stories. And they still don't care. Um, the Jungle Cruise. They replaced the natives with chimpanzees because you didn't want to be insulting to to the natives. That's Trader so Sam's sense. not there, but you can see his gift shop. Isn't that her? Oh, wait, no. Trader Sam was a her in the movie. Oh, yes. It was her in the movie. Yeah. And the lost and found is all the lost items. But no, no, no. It's the gift shop where he's hawking the lost items that, you, you know, instead of holding on to them. So he's, you know, fencing the items out the back. <laughs> and the chimpanzees, I'm going to bring it up again because I still can't believe this one. That they actually had a D23 interview where they talked about how they, you know, have to look at, to enhance experiences to for guests in the diverse world we live in. But no, no, we're not doing woke stuff at Disney. But um, they had to address the negative depictions of the natives. So they're going to change that. But we get down here and they're talking about the um, the chimpanzees, the animatronic chimpanzees. And they talk about how they had to talk to Dr. Mark Penning at Animal Kingdom to say, look, we have these chimpanzees that are coming into this new world and we want to have fun with them. How do we make sure it's done in an authentic way for the chimpanzees? They, they seriously asked this. We want to have fun, but we're not making fun of the animals. His team had great insights and it really elevated the scene. Well, you what? can't fucking make fun of chimpanzees. What? Animatronic chimpanzees. What if the chimpanzees are eating the fucking faces off the natives? I, don't, I mean... Doesn't Trader matter. Sam, the reason Trader Sam's not there is they ate his fucking face off. I think, no, <laughs> no, you have to be, you have to be, you know, you have to be accepting and inclusive towards the flippin' animatronic chimpanzees. <laughs> I, I, I really wish I was kidding, but I am totally serious. But no, no, Disney's not going overboard on this whole inclusion shit. There was talk they were going to re-record different things in the parks for different voices of characters because a white voice actor might have played oh, the that part. Was, that was nuts. So, yeah, the voice actor thing, for those of you who missed it, uh, they they basically purged every white voice actor doing uh, minority roles. Oh, things that were coded, even if it was animals. They're coded, even if it, they were animals, right? People that had been in the roles for years because a couple of people in Hollywood – uh, in 2020 decided they wanted to, st- they decided they wanted to step down from their role. And then because they decided they wanted to step down from their role to give I it. I think they were pushed to, to step down. Well, the first people. couple weren't, I don't think. After but that, they definitely After were. that, they were. Because I could tell the guy who played Cleveland, who was a white guy, um, he definitely didn't want to leave the role, but he got pushed out. Um, they replaced Jubilee and made a big deal about it for X-Men. Um, you know, so a lot of people got pushed out of these roles because that was the whole thing. So Disney was going to go through and like audit the parks and like any 
But I'm surprised they didn't go back and like re-record Matthew Broderick as Simba, you know, and get mm-hmm. Donald Glover in there. Cause you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I could totally see that. I could, I, I'm honest to God, Disney, cause they retcon their movies. I could see them going back to the 1994 version of the Lion King and re-recording the dialogue for Simba and replacing because there are two white actors play Simba and replace them with two black actors just to be politically correct. Mm-hmm. I could totally see them doing that. Probably. That wouldn't surprise me. But I'm just like saying this is this is this is how far it's gone. They they recent years toned it down somewhat. But it, this and a lot of things we're talking about were under Bob Iger. A lot of the films were approved by Bob Iger. I know that the re-recording and all that crap was around the time of Bob Iger. Yeah. So I'm like, it's 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 a load of shit what he's saying. Oh, yes. we're not, you're misunderstanding what it means. No, no, we're not misunderstanding what it means. I think, Bob, you're misunderstanding what it means. Oh, that's not what we we're just, oh, we're, we're, we're trying to make for the, oh, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. yeah, and the thing is, is you can trace the decline in Disney's revenue directly to them getting into politics heavily and it becoming noticeable. Like, Disney movies have always been inclusive. Disney movies have always had different kinds of people on them. Now that more so, yeah, in recent years, I'll, I'll give you that. But like... But as it should be. It should be more diverse. There should be more representation. You just do it. You don't have to... That's the thing. Right. You just do it. Just you don't have to make a big fucking everybody, show about that's, and that's, 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 You can make a good movie everybody can love. You know, I remember when the Black Panther, the second one was coming out, Um, people, there was a campaign, people on TikTok and stuff, that white people shouldn't even go to the movie theater the first week. It's not they for didn't. you. They didn't. And then they got mad. You guys <laughs> buy tickets for them to go for free. What? I'm like, well, when a movie comes out with a, with a you know, white character, are you buying tickets for me to go for free? No. What? This is how uh, ridiculous it is gotten. And and I'm tired. And that wasn't Disney's fault. I'm not blaming them. No, for that. that was that's just crazy. But that's, I'm just saying this, what I'm the, saying, that mentality though. Yes. Like, and the thing what? is, like, we do need more diverse characters. Like Black Panther was great because it was there, it was it was there's its own character. It was its own movie, um, in Canto, Coco. All these things were fantastic because they were diverse, but they were about a great story that everybody can relate to. That's why Disney was so great because everyone can relate to these. Yeah, like Coco, like you didn't have to be uh, Latino, right? You didn't have to be Mexican. Um, you just be. Do you have Do you have a grandmother? Do you have loved ones that you lost? Okay, that's all you need. Right. That's all you need. Right. You know, Lilo and Stitch. You know, you you have you, a family. It's about family, and you found family, and your family you have, and you know how sometimes it's hard to be a family. And it was a good movie that everybody could relate to, and the characters were all diverse. There wasn't. I don't think there was a white person in that movie, was there? It didn't matter, no. and no one thought anything of it. Because it was a good movie that was diverse, and it was diversity done well. The characters look like what you expect the characters to look like. They did it years ago. They've been doing it for years, and it was great, and it was entertaining at everyone. It was for everyone. Because you can't, you can't, you know, make things for everyone when you're just leading with it's only for certain people. And what happens is movies that are perfectly fine, and there have been many, many examples over the last couple of years because of this political conversation. There are I movies. Agree. That were fine. That were Haunted dis- Mansion. Haunted Mansion was top of my mind. I liked the Haunted Mansion movie quite a bit. I, I loved it. Um, a lot of people thought afterwards when it was on Disney Plus and said that it was good, but they didn't watch it in the theater because they thought it was going to be politically yeah. motivated. Yeah, I mean, it was way better than the Eddie Murphy movie, but um, even though the Eddie Murphy is one our daughter still loves. Yeah, it's okay, but I, I mean, as far as because we're theme park fans, so it had more of the ride in mm-hmm. it, you know. But but the thing is, that movie was preemptively destroyed because they drug politics into it. People associated with the movie drug politics into yep. it and it didn't, it wasn't a political movie. It wasn't a woke no. movie. It wasn't a, so because that came up and the same thing happened with Dungeons and Dragons and yeah. the same thing happened with Blue Beetle. And People the, you just know? hear this stuff and they immediately get turned off. They're just and like, yeah, what I'm not you're go doing is you're creating a problem that has, that was solved before you are just, reigniting a, a, a keg, a powder keg that had been put out years ago just to say you can. And like people hear this stuff and they just immediately, I'm not going. Because you as soon as they hear Disney, people immediately assume, okay, well, somebody is going to race bend, gender swap, something like that's going to be ha- in it. I know it's going to, they're going to ruin it somehow. And then they don't go. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, and it's wrong because the people that, you know, like you said, the Haunted Mansion, for example, was a really good movie. And yes, the cast, there's a lot of the cast that were not white, but it made sense. And it, who, so fucking what? It, it, it was still a good movie and it was, a, it was in New Orleans. 
So the so, princess and the frog. Yes. So I mean, you want to talk about, you so know what I'm saying? Like, and, like, and a lot of the cast wasn't black too. I don't understand what was, the big it, fucking deal was. Half the cast wasn't. It was just like, the, it again, was a good movie. The, I didn't care. The conversation around it because of people being so obsessed, obsessed with, with this and identity politics, being so obsessed with it. On both sides. They, they turned it into a battleground and it wasn't. And, and I've seen it. Three or four movies I can think of that I enjoyed the hell out of over the last couple of years that were destroyed because everybody wanted to be trendy to be like, oh, well, we got the messaging in the movie. And there wasn't. It was like well, if you just put the their, movie out there. A lot of it was their own people. Yes. Like, like, like shut up. Like, you know, we saw it with um, Blue Beetle. We saw it with yeah, Haunted Mansion. Blue Beetle was out there. And like even Blue Beetle, the, the trailer. The Batman joke that turned a lot of people off. That Batman joke was only they only clipped they clipped it. They didn't have the the joke in full context. Plus, you didn't understand that character. That was that character's personality, but it was a joke. It was it was in the greater context of the movie. It wasn't a movie that shits on Batman. No. And um, I mean, there are a lot of flaws with it, but it was it was it was better than I thought Dungeons it was going to be. Dungeons and Dragons, same thing. We're going to em emasculate, emasculate men. The men, and they didn't. No. So like, their own people are causing the damage. Um, and Star Wars, every time they open their mouth, it's like, would you shut your mouth? You're just making it worse. Like you turn people off before it comes. Act like people are already turned off. I mean, you already were because it's Leslie Heller. There's a whole bunch of weirdness around the whole situation. Yeah. But every comment that's come out about it has been about how diverse and inclusive it is and about, you know, Jedi women and women, women, women. And, oh, look, there's not white guys in this. And, so, yeah. and because of that, you just, you, do, you know, people are like, okay, it's about message, not about a good story. You do it to yourselves. Stop. Just make a good show and put it out there and see what the fuck happens. I'm so tired of it. It's because they don't have confidence in what they're putting out. No, they have to hide behind shields. And yeah. it's really shitty to use people you're supposed to be representing as your fucking shields. It's like, what the hell's wrong with you, Bob? He's... Woke my... But yeah, Bob, it is. Sorry. Stop it. They're just trying to rewrite history now. They got the they got the win with the proxy vote. We could debate as to how they got it or why... They, and and now they're just gonna try to oh we were never woke I don't understand what are you talking about woke <laughs> you know woke means <laughs> fuck off Bob anyway we're wrapping this up we're, we're wrapping this one up do All better right. do better Bob do better Bob with your privilege well I mean he's just like I mean beyond the fact that they're like you know making it so divisive they're causing they're causing divisiveness. And they're saying that they're, that, that, that they're not, but they are. And it's unnecessary. And the thing is, these movies like Haunted Mansion, like 10 years ago, no one would have thought anything of it. You know, a lot of these choices you're making these big deals about, if you just put it out, 10 years ago, you would have just put it out, made a good show, a happy universe, and no one would have thought anything of it. And now because of you know, pandering and politics and narrative, and Disney is notorious for all these things, when people hear about it, and there you're leading with these things. They you they don't go. And that's why you're failing. Yep. You gonna wrap it up? Yes. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.